Tune in to ESG Matters with Risk Insights, where we explore ESG with impact. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of ESG Matters with Risk Insights. Thank you for all the views, the comments, the reposts, and likes. I was looking through my comments uh, on one of my recent posts, and there was one that really stuck out with me. And I wanted to further elaborate. Someone commented on AKA, Embracing Marxism. Good luck with that in America. James Lindsay was decoded or has decoded the woke alphabet of acronyms, and the whole edifice will soon crumble under the weight of its own corruption. Unquote. So the comment is about the woke movement of James Lindsay and about forcing behavior to limit carbon footprints while the same people are creating fossil fuels and benefiting from this. So I wanted us to stop as listeners and engage on this interesting comment as there is definite merit in reflecting on this for our listeners. For those of our listeners who don't know about the woke movement, let me share a little bit about the background around it. Woke highlights racial prejudice and discrimination. At the beginning of 2010, it began to encompass a broader sense of awareness towards social inequalities such as sexism. The phrase woke has been present in the African-American vernacular English since the 1930s, and the phrase began to gain further popularity around 2010. Over time, it became increasingly connected to matters of social inequalities beyond race, such as gender and other marginalized identities. The term has become popular with millennials and members of the Gen Z. Due to its international spread, the word woke was added to the Oxford English Dictionary in 2017. Nowadays, many on the political right and some in the center in several Western countries have begun sarcastically using the term as derogatory for various leftist and progressive movements and ideologies they perceive as overzealous, performative, or insincere. In turn, some of the commentators came to consider woke an offensive term that disparages persons who promote progressive ideas involving identity and race. Since then, the derivative terms such as woke washing and woke capitalism were coined to describe the conduct of persons or entities who signal support for progressive causes rather than working towards genuine change. I believe that ESG matters with Risk Insights and is here to create value and manage a risk that is imminent. The number of natural disasters over this month alone on a global scale is a fact and a risk. It is destruction, disruption, and it affects everyone, irrespective of race, class, color, or gender. It is borderless and interconnected. Risk Insights tracks and mines empirical data of all companies on an exchange and has all ESG-related data for companies that are listed in South Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, Mauritius, Ghana, and Botswana. This provides us with data that is homogeneous so that we can measure progression like for like, as well as a company stewardship. Risk Insights can identify what data the company is reporting in terms of ESG, what is the carbon footprint of the company uh, in the actual jurisdiction that it is uh, deriving its revenue from, it also allows companies not to social or greenwash or use emerging economies to transfer ESG risk of their investments into marginalized communities and countries. One of the benefits of the African continent is that we have the lowest carbon footprint on the globe, and it is vital for Africa to benefit from this using disclosure. That means reporting on its ESG disclosure. This may mean that highly capitalized companies in Africa might have a much larger carbon footprint and social inequality than a mid-size or a small company. This may pose risk for large multinationals and super corporates. Therefore, the stewardship plays a big role in correcting this risk, and it is a massive opportunity for mid-size and smaller companies as well. Despite all injustices of the past or the present, whether this be social or climate-related, we all need to act together 
to protect the planet and its people for prosperity through good leadership. For today, I wanted to talk a little bit more about ESG for privately owned companies. Many believe that ESG is only a problem for listed companies on the capital markets. This may be somewhat true, but the largest part of carbon footprints for listed companies is derived from their underlying supply chain. This falls under scope 3 carbon emissions. This means that this is mainly derived from privately owned companies that make up between 60 to 90% of the global supply chain, depending on where you are. In short, it also means that all businesses are affected. For examples, within banks, it is their counterparties. These are companies that are financed by banks that are either listed or unlisted. Within the Basel regulations, they have issued the first draft regulations to consider ESG, which means that if a company is not disclosing its carbon footprint, this would impact the borrowing cost, which means the interest rate that would be charged in the future would have to consider the carbon footprint of the underlying counterparty. This is underway and under discussion and is an actual reality. The S1 and S2 regulations of the IFRS has made ESG a reality for all businesses that are reporting using IFRS. To deal with this challenge, Risk Insights also created a tool last year to measure the ESG readiness for privately owned companies using machine learning. This tool is called A-Cubed. This AI tool provides a company with an ESG readiness score and a report within 48 hours. The machine learning algorithm reads the information and concatenates the data to the answers to ensure reliability. This tool is affordable and very easy and accessible from the Microsoft shop. I had the privilege to assist with the build of the tool with Risk Insights, keeping my minds focused last year. This tool ensures that privately owned companies in Africa are not left behind given their size. It's an easy and simple way to check your ESG readiness if you're a privately held company. Give it a try. For this podcast and any company that would like to use the tool, the first 10 companies will receive A-Cube for free. A-Cube is used by companies globally and in Africa to improve their ESG disclosure and understand their scope 3 emissions within the supply chain and manage counterparty risk management. Many large listed companies reflect low scope 3 emissions and higher scope 1 and 2. Generally, this information provides an analyst or an investment officer with an understanding of either the low ESG maturity of the company or its stewardship or greenwashing. So together we can create a sustainable world and create change with ESG matters. By lowering our carbon footprint, we can create value for all and for future generations to come. Come join me next week where we will be joined by Dr. Vinika Rao, who will be exploring the impact of male allyship on gender balance. We began Women's Week with Irene Kino, who explored the impact of women leadership on boards and led into the month with Mr. Martin Schwiet, exploring the solutions towards gender-based violence and the program he has set into motion to drive change. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I look forward to reading your comments and your thoughts and insights. I am Anushka Bogdanov. Thank you for joining me today for ESG Matters with Risk Insights. Ciao for now.